glorified, be glorified. the glory you get the praise you take the honor I just want to say yeah. you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor I just want to say you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor I just want to say, I've come back to say, thank you, Lord, oh, hey, for everything you've done, Lord. Thank you. 
to you My life belongs to you My life belongs to you say.
Just wave your hands and bless his name. We bless you, Lord.
Worship him. Let's give him the glory and the honor. We worship you, Father. We bless your name, God. You are worthy of glory and honor. We give you glory. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Lord. You deserve the glory and the honor. We bless you, Father. We bless you, Lord.
Your name. 
Awesome indeed is your name. Our God, we worship you. You are worthy of all of our worship. And to you we lift our voices and praise. To you we lift our hearts in adoration. To offer to you that which is your due. Everything that we are. We sing our songs to you because you are the reason why we are. You are the source of the songs that we sing. You are the melody and you are the harmony. We celebrate you, our King. And tonight we have come to worship you. We have come to fellowship with you. We have come to stay in your presence. We have come to be touched by you. We have come to be transformed by you. We have come to receive strength. Lord, we worship you. Indeed, we say awesome, awesome, awesome is your name. Glory and honor we ascribe to you. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus Christ's name we worship. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's take one more song. We will come and bow down. Enjoy worshiping him, then make yourself look pleasurable, make like you're enjoying it. Hallelujah! 
sit down one more song. You are the source of my music. Hallelujah. And now the choir is down because when they are up, they're a bit tensed up. So now we are down. Let's just... You are the source of my music. You are the song that I sing. For the Lord our God, the Almighty, He reigns. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One more time, let's just appreciate the Lord. And help me welcome somebody before you take your seat. You know, everyone here is declaring that the Lord God Almighty reigns. You know why? 
because the American embassy said he shouldn't go to church. They said he shouldn't breathe, he shouldn't sit down, he shouldn't stand up. But you're here, isn't it? Because you know that the Lord God Almighty and he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. We have said safety is not a location. Safety is a person. Jesus is that name. When your life is hid in Christ, you are safe. Praise the Lord. Our times are in his hands. And the Lord will have mercy upon our nation, Nigeria. In the name of Jesus, his salvation will be seen. His deliverance will be noted. The people of the earth will say, have you heard what the Lord has done for the people of Nigeria? The God of the Christians, the Lord Jesus has done great things for them, whereof they are glad. And we say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. They shall plan, they shall plot, but they will not be able to carry it out in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will show us mercy. The Lord will be gracious to our nation. Uh, it's too much now. Eh? We are still talking about flood now. And then another one. The Lord is merciful and gracious. He will overthrow all the wicked in the land and frustrate their devices in the name of Jesus. The righteous shall be glad and say, see what our God has done for us. The wicked will scamper. They will run even when no one is pursuing. Father, we thank you. Because the reason we are here is because we know that you are Alpha and you are Omega. You are the Most High God. You are the controller of your universe. You have not given that responsibility to anyone. You are sovereign above all. We worship you, our God. The omnipotent God, the omniscient God, the omnipresent God. Jehovah is your name. You are the man of war. You are mighty in battle. You do wonderful things. You do glorious things. Awesome indeed is your name. We bless you, our God. We, your children, have gathered once more to honor you, to worship you, to learn at your feet, to look into your word. Your word is life. Your word is spirit. Lord, as we continue, speak life to us. Quicken our spirits. Let us be transformed by reason of our coming. We thank you for our brethren that are online. Let it be for them as it is for us here. Do awesome, wonderful works in our lives today. And let all glory and honor be ascribed to you and to you alone. And let the blessings be ours. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, uh, welcome to our Kingdom Keys, and um, as is our custom, some persons are going to bless us this evening with what they learned and what they have walked in and what they have experienced from Sunday's meeting. So if you want to do that for us, kindly raise your hand so that I can give you the microphone. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Have any persons? Hallelujah. Or we should just go ahead. Okay, sorry. You have a mic? Hallelujah. Uh, lesson from last week's sermon on the book of Acts precisely is uh, how we should be led by the Spirit of God and not by elements. And we should rise above uh, being moved by what moved others, that our lives become the barometer through which people see God and understand what God is doing at the at the small time. And from where the two cups from, uh, <laughs> it was immediately was it on Sunday that the news actually broke out that look, there's an alert, this, 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 and all of that. You could almost actually see through to it. But again, I said to myself, if I've just come to church and I heard it that look, this. Uh, host of evidence that comes sometimes are direct attacks to our faiths, and regardless, and I bless the name of the Lord, I was able to word it up and said, okay, I'll come to church regardless, because um, 
the, the decision cannot stop me from going to where I am in Naira and Kobo. It should not stop me from going to where I am spiritually nourished to have life. And he said, dead things are things that easily, you know, they are susceptible to being tossed by enemies. And the question has just been you know, in my head that, look, am I alive? Being alive now is not being biologically alive. It's being spiritually alive. If you are spiritually alive, will not be tossed by things that toss other persons. And will be able to pursue the mandate of God that says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and every other thing will follow. But if the, if we are not alive on the other way, definitely we will, put, we will get the priorities wrong. Thank you very much for the message, Brother. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sir. Okay, that's true. It was on Sunday that this um, information came out. And um, God has spoken to us that we don't respond to the wind. They're unreliable, you know, because um, when the things that happen, happen. Nobody wants anybody. You know, it's not saying that they shouldn't do what they do, but we are just different. And from previous Sunday and on Wednesday, we began to look at the remnants. These are who the remnants are. The remnants don't respond. They don't call it conspiracy, what the people call it conspiracy. Besides, the government is speaking for those that are under its authority. We are under the authority of God. So even if everybody says go and God says to you, sit, that's the moment you should sit down. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. After him. Yes, go ahead. Anybody? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, on Sunday, you prayed for us to have an increase of grace in order for us to look mad in a world where everybody is going in a certain direction and what stood out for me was how Paul would have felt the moment he gave that advice and every imagine that that storm did not even really happen it might have made him to not want to speak out next time so I'm actually praying for grace to be able to stay looking mad when every other person thinks that what my decision is doesn't makes sense because it's really not easy to stand out and then secondly you made us understand that to conform is to just you know flow with whatever is around you but to be transformed is from what is inside of you so my prayer is to just grow in the revelation and knowledge of God so that the transformation is what I'll experience, not confirmation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very good um, points noted there that we are transformed from what is inside. We are conformed by what is happening to us from outside. And we saw that Paul, when Paul said we shouldn't go, the weather said this is the time to go. And for a season, you know, the Bible says they are not long afterwards. For some of us, it might take one year before everybody comes to realize that what you said was it. So we receive grace to stay with what God has given us to, you know, do and to say until he confirms that we are on his side. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Um, I just want to add up to what the earlier said. Um, I've been struggling in my mind since on Sunday when this message came. Because when uh, Daddy uh, preached to us concerning this, the first thing that the Holy Spirit revealed to me was how God um, brought me here into Abuja. And I never wanted to share this with anybody because I wanted, there was a time I actually wanted to share it with, with whoever I want to share it with. So, linking to how God revealed to Paul that the ship is going to capsize. And the Bible says that um, the wind uh, grows slowly and then the people started thinking that it will not happen, as Paul said. And then the next scripture says that the wind increases. So, um, just back to the story that I want to share with us. We don't want the story, just... Yes, sorry. I, it has been disturbing me, so I don't okay, know. Okay. So, linking to um, the message, because actually, what that is, he says that 
what happens around us does not really matter, but what happens inside of us. So, um, I never wanted to come to Abuja. So, the Holy Spirit, I, I had a dream. God showed me in that dream that I should come to Abuja because I've told everybody that I don't want to come to Abuja. That was what I, I told my mom, I told my brothers that I don't want to come to Abuja. The only thing that will bring me to Abuja is after when I graduate from uh, university. And then that very night I was sleeping and then I, I had a dream. In that dream, God showed me that I, sh uh, I, I will come to Abuja and that I should come to Abuja that in Abuja is going to change my life. So I was like that very morning, when I woke up, I told my mom that I'm coming to Abuja that very morning after the dream. So when I came to that very morning, I left my village to Abuja. When I came to Abuja, the first six months was terrible, just like Daddy says. Because God can show you something, and then you as, uh, as you are going on in life, you see the opposite, and you're like, is that what God really showed me? And you begin to doubt. So a lot of things happened. I came to Abuja, no job, nothing. And getting to a point that even a single food to eat, there was one time I went to, I don't know why I'm sure, because the Holy Spirit actually said he's going to use this to bless somebody. So when I, uh, I was looking for a job, I couldn't, I, I couldn't get a job. And then the Holy Spirit drew me closer to him. God started revealing a lot of things to me that even if you place uh, money side by side with what he was showing me, I, I think I would choose what he was showing me rather than taking the money. So a lot of things happen that I, it's just a lot. So I don't know. Hallelujah. This will... let's, let's appreciate the Lord. The, the point is clear. He didn't want to come to Abuja, but the Lord revealed to him to come. And when he came, God didn't so, uh, welcome him with material blessings, but the Spirit of God started revealing God to him and working things that are eternal in his life. Is that so for more details, <laughs> call this number below. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I mean, that's what we are learning, okay? And we thank God, and uh, that's similar to the testimony I also shared. So we can move forward. Do we have any other person? We'll move forward. Okay, praise the Lord. Oh, okay, so in essence, what um, I believe that we are learning at this time is that the wind, the elements, the things that the normal person's rely on for direction, for guidance. We are seen from scripture, like we saw in the case of Paul and the fellow uh, uh, travelers with him, that soft wind did not end up as soft wind. And then we saw also Jesus' disciples, that the contrary wind, in fact, if you read that story, the moment Jesus got in the boat, the Bible says the ship was on a shore. So it wasn't just that the wind ceased, but there was an acceleration of the journey miraculously. Okay, so we see from scripture and we interpret it into our lives. The Bible says these things which are written are written for our examples. So it then means that somebody listening to me now may be facing a lot of adverse circumstances. It does not mean you're in the wrong path. Praise the Lord. Some other person may be in a direction where God has said, don't go, and it's as though everything is moving on smoothly. It doesn't mean you're also in the right path. We are guided by the word of God. We are guided by the witness of the spirit. Praise the Lord. That is what the Christian relies on. And somebody may say, what about results? You know, that's what our brother was trying to say, you know, to saying that when he came, how do you really know what the results are? It's until the end. Praise the Lord. The Bible says we do not judge anything before it's time. So how do you know what the results are? You, you know, somebody comes for marriage and you know that this is not God's will. And then you rush, you go ahead and get in. Along the journey, four years, three years, you're the envy of persons. But you know you're seeing pepper there. Praise the Lord. You're seeing pepper. Why? Because you know that this is not what you really wanted. But you just wanted to have that conclusion forgetting that god who loves you who gave you the signs that this one is not it wants the best for you irrespective 
So this would help us to just hold ourselves and trust God as we join in. Praise the Lord. So I want to deal with a few things and we'll still pray tonight because what we're learning is not easy. You know, we have grown in our natural mind. We have experience. We understand that if the door is open, if you're me, any door that opens, you turn in. I mean, that's the way we should go. But we're now learning as we're maturing in the faith that is not every door that opens that is a testimony. Praise the Lord. And it's not every door that is shut that means there is no way. Okay, so there is breakthrough. We can actually break some doors down because we know that God has said this is what it's going to be. Praise the Lord. So I want to look at a few things. And I want to tell you about some, uh, this thing I read, some, some, um, some scientists had done, done an experiment with plants. I will try to find the story, but I couldn't get it, so I would have given you more details. So they did this experiment with plants, and they put everything necessary for these plants to grow well, to do well, the nutrients, you know, the resources and everything. And these plants grew. It was in a, a controlled environment, okay? But they realized that they didn't produce maximally, and they were not strong. Okay, but they gave it everything. They gave it the best soil. They gave it the best, you know, everything that the plant would have needed. And they were wondering what is wrong, what is wrong. Until one of them said, we blocked it from the wind. There was no wind. So this plant was growing in safety. There was no wind trying to blow it down. We protected it. Praise the Lord. So they realized that the wind they shielded these plants from made the plants not to develop resistance. And that resistance hindered it from being optimal in its productivity. Now, the same thing with us. In fact, it's now documented that the wind, the, 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 the stronger the wind, the stronger the roots of the plant. When the plants are not exposed to strong wind, the roots are also what? Not strong. Because it's the wind blowing on the plant or the tree this way and that way that makes the root what? Go deeper to secure it on the ground. Now, the same thing goes on in our lives. Everyone would wish to have a life where there is no resistance. It would be so easy, isn't it? It would be so beautiful. You know, no, no, you never hear a no. Praise the Lord. You never have a delay. Every food, there is no, they don't cook more. Every food is microwave. You just bring it. Three minutes, the food is ready. You eat everything about you. Nothing takes time. That's what we wish. But you see, if we have a life like that, you will realize that you will not have roots. You will be unstable. You won't make sense because life would not have shown you how to be, you know, to dig down and be established. So this, this evening, we want to look at a few things. And, and I, the, what I wrote here, first of all, is that anyone can do the possible because we're talking to believers now. Anyone can do the possible, isn't it? What is easy? It says, if wishes were horses, beggars will do what? Uh -huh. So anyone can do the possible. Then it says, add a bit of courage and zeal, and some may do the phenomenal. So really, some persons do the phenomenal because... They add a bit of courage and zeal to the possible and they're able to do the phenomenal, sorry. But it, the, this person now says, however, only Christians are obliged to do the impossible. So for us, Momichi, I think last Sunday teaching says, remnants are excellent people. There's an excellent spirit that must manifest upon the remnants. If you're a Christian... The possible is not your standard. The phenomena is not really your standard. Your calling is to do the impossible. So if you work in an office and every person in that office is full of excuses, you should be a wonder to them. We began to learn that on Sunday. If you're married and your husband is a beast, you should be that beauty that comes down the beast. Or your wife is, are you getting what I'm saying? The, that's what the, the Christian is obliged to do the impossible. Why? The Apostle Paul speaking to us, Philippians 4.13, what did he say? He says, I can do how many things? I can do all things. 
Can I hear you say that? I can do all things through Christ who? Yes, we learned on Sunday and it's very important. If you were not expected to do impossible things, they won't give you the Holy Spirit. Our Lord Jesus had walked with the disciples, taught them, you know, fellowship with them and all of that. Before he was going to leave, he said to them, don't go anywhere. He said, tarry until your word, endued with power from on high. What are they giving you power from on high for? If you go to the UK, the policemen carry buttons. They carry stick. If you go to America, the policemen are one war that are, that are ready for war. You know why? Because the, the crime in America, the person can bring automatic machine gun. The crime in UK, highest is knife. So the policemen are equipped for the type of crime they're going to confront. Praise the Lord. It's only in Nigeria that the people carry less than the enemies are carried. <laughs> are you getting what I'm saying? It's because God knows that as a Christian, you're going to be challenged to do the impossible. You know, we read the Bible and these things are talking about people. You know, you know, you know, I've told us this. When I was younger, I thought Israel was in heaven. How many of us thought that? That Israel was not a place on earth. How many of us thought that? Because how can you read something in the Bible then it will still be on earth? Everything in the Bible is, is in heaven. Okay? So, 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 so the people we read of in the Bible are not spirits. They are men like us. So when the Bible says Daniel was in Babylon and refused to eat the king's delicacies and said to the king's, you know, he says, well, prove me. He was stepping into the world impossible. Now, the truth is this. Those things will not happen because you hear a sermon. They will happen because a situation will arise and you will believe God. No, that, that, you, know, you know that story. Daniel didn't say, my father told me when I come here. There was no pastor preempting him. But he just said, no, I will not do this. He next thing he said, prove us. That was a challenge. And when that happened, just like we know in the scripture, it says the eyes of the Lord runs what? To and fro upon the whole earth, searching for the man or woman whose heart is lawyer, that he might show himself was strong. So that's it. Immediately we see Daniel walking in the impossible. How can you go to a place? I mean, that's, that account I never get out of it. You, how can you leave your, your native country? It's just like they take you now and take you to China. You know, at the rate this government is going, that's why you must not vote some people in. Because if you vote some people in, very soon, Chinese people will now look and say, okay, all of you, we want you to go and uh, do something in China. And they just carry all of us because the way they are borrowing money. So, so imagine they take you from here to China and keep you in China for one year. And you can speak Chinese their native language, their history and all of that better than China. It's not possible. Even to cover your tongue to say quacking, quacky, Wahala has started. Do you understand? So, but Daniel got to Babylon and beat Babylonians in their language. You know why? <laughs> the anointing. And some, let me just say I have the anointing. If you're a student and you're listening to me, what is that exam that you can't pass? Anyone can do the possible. But the Christian is obliged to do the impossible. Why? Because you've been given the Holy Spirit. We saw on Sunday that Romans 8, 11, It says, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in your mortal bodies, it says he's also what? Able to quicken you. These are things that you remember in the moment of decision. I'm not alone. Praise the Lord. Is this type of someone that when I finish hearing, I now want to sing like Mommy Chi. Are you ready? <laughs> Praise the Lord. All things that the Lord asked you to do. You know, that's what the, the, the living Bible, can you put the, the living Bible, Philippians 4, 13 for us on the screen? The living Bible, let's see what it says. So we, yes. It says, for I can do what? Everything God asks me to. 
with the help. So it's what he asked you to. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's what he asked you to. Okay? Another scripture, Deuteronomy 32. Let's look at that one. The Christian, the point we're establishing here is that you and I are beyond phenomenal. Amen? So, when we, you know, the enemy comes at us and he says, everybody's doing it. Say, yes, I've left that group. Do you understand? I've exited that group. I'm no longer everybody. Ah, this is what people are, this is what young people are doing. I've left that group. This is what they're doing. I've left that group. Look, look, look at uh, Deuteronomy 32. I, I'll read... Um, it, the, the, whole, the whole chapter is interesting when you go home, read it. But I'll read verse 4 first. Four, let's, let's look at 4. It says, he is the rock, talking about our God. He said, his work is what? Perfect. For all his ways are justice, a God of truth and without injustice. Righteous and upright is he. I am a father. Many of us here are parents and we are, we are guardians and uncles and aunties to people. Will you send a little child on an assignment that you know he can't carry out? You won't do that. You won't do that. Now, God will not send you. God will not send you. She was talking about not dating and things like that. God will not send you into a world that he knows that if you don't date, you can't marry. And expect you to be normal. His work is what? Perfect. His work is perfect. In, in, within marriage, the problem is, you know, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave, you know, himself for, for her. The challenge is this. Most times when the husband really starts to love the wife like that, the wife will treat him anyhow. Take advantage. But you know what? When you sow, what do you do? After some time, you reap. Or is it the wife that says, let me submit to this man as unto the Lord. The man will now imagine that this woman is mumu and then starts behaving anyhow, isn't it? But after some time, through faith and what? Patience, there is going to be a reaping. Are you getting what I'm saying? So God knows. He knows what he put in his word. He knows the system he put in his word. He said, forgive. He said, if I keep forgiving, people will keep be, be treating me anyhow. Just keep forgiving. A time is going to come where God will also raise the standard around you that your presence will command an, you know, a, a power. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, so, so we, the, the, you, you and I must understand the God that we're dealing with. He is the rock. There is nothing that can be improved. God made no mistakes. Are you with me? There is nothing in God's word that there is no, there is no new version of the Bible. When we say new King James and old King James, it's the language that they are changing. It's not the principles. You know people write books. In, in, fact, in fact, I understand that um, there is a library, in, I think in France, uh, a scientific library that's um, about 100 years or so. Or I don't even know if it's about up to 100. They say now almost all the books that are obsolete because they are new. They've discovered so many things that what they wrote is no longer true. Science is changing every day. Medical science is changing. Everything is changing. But the word of God, <laughs> he's the rock. His work is what? Perfect. How should you behave? How should a young man cleanse his ways? By, by what? Taking heed according to his word. Not by having every need met. Praise the Lord. So it says, all his ways are justice. A God of truth without injustice. Righteous and upright. Do you know that if you take this alone from coming to church this evening, your Christianity is going to go higher. Because what happens, remember Adam and Eve, what was it that the serpent suggested to them? That God is keeping something good from you. He knows that the day you eat of the fruit of this tree, what are you going to do? You will be wise and you become like God. So God is not just. What makes me to cut corners in a situation because I feel that I need this result. And if I follow God's way, I will miss this result. 
I won't get to this outcome. But when you settle it, that this God is what? A God of truth without, which means he cannot, I, I cannot suffer unduly and permanently for trusting God. It's not possible. It's not possible. Okay. Uh, that, that's just that. But, but let's go to 30 and 31, which is where I, I want us to take to still answer this, the impossible. 30 says, how could one chase a thousand and two put 10,000 to flight unless their rock had sold them and the Lord had surrendered them? 31. He said, for their rock is not like our rock, even our enemies themselves being what? Judges. What, what the scripture is saying here is this. You see, one with God functions with supernatural ability. Whether it is victory or whatever, it's still determined by God. It says, how could one chase a thousand? It meant that these people were enemies of, this, this passage is actually against Israel. Okay? So, because the rock of Israel had withdrawn, they now began to exercise on common victory. So when you look at the situation in Nigeria the same way, you see that that's why when we come here, we are addressing ourselves because what the Lord said to us, if the Lord delights in us, what is going to happen? He will give us the land. There is nothing to these people. There is nothing to them. If the Lord delights in us, if the Lord, if we can get it right, and we don't need everybody, if the remnant can get it right, and I believe we are getting it right, amen? God is working, he's encouraging and strengthening us. There is nothing with the enemy. What, what, what do they have? Praise the Lord. They don't have anything. What they are enjoying now is that God is not pleased with his people. And he's turning his eyes away. That's what happened here. He said, how could one chase a thousand and two put 10,000 to flight unless their rock, the rock of Israel, has sold them and the Lord has surrendered them? For their rock, their strength is not like our strength. So when they have victory against us, just like what, um, what uh, Joshua did, when Israel suffered victory before air, uh, uh, Joshua went to God to say what? Something is wrong. We don't lose battles. Christians don't lose battles. Praise the Lord. No, we don't. We don't. Okay? So, so we, we, are, we, are, we are designed by the ability and the responsibility that God has put upon us. We are not meant to fail. That's fail permanently. I get what I'm saying. We go through, but we don't fail. It's not possible. The Bible says, you have not chosen me, but I have what? chosen you and ordained you to go and bear fruit. You know, you know what it means for God to choose you? When, when, when I was younger, when they're playing, um, you know, all those soccer that they choose people, they never used to choose me. I know some of you, they always chose some of you. It's when, when, when the, the people that used to choose me is when a star comes on. Some of you may not understand, but for those who, this will help you. You know, when a star comes on, they will now say, okay, because this person is so good, let's give him all the bad people. <laughs> because they are confident that with him alone, even if we are just kicking the ball away, he'll still win. That, that's the only way, way we came in. So, so God, praise the Lord, God would not choose you if not that he knew he can walk through you. Are you getting it? He said, you did, you see, it, if I chose him, he could find out that he can't really walk with me. But to choose me meant he looked at his ability. He looked at his omnipotence and he looked at my impotence and said that my impotence cannot hinder his omnipotence. So he chose me. So when he says something to me, I should make no excuse. Because he factored it in. Ah, God, you don't know my office. He knows your office. And he knows you. God, you don't know my wife. He knows your wife and he knows you. God, you don't know these people here. He knows every one of that and he still chose you. Praise the Lord. 
you did not choose me, but I chose you. And uh, some translations, King James will say, and ordained you that you can bear fruit. So bearing fruit should be automatic. And that fruit bearing is in every situation, every circumstance. So things are doing well will bear fruit. Beautiful. That's very easy. But in the difficult times also, we must also what? Bear fruit. Why? Because the Almighty expects it. We are obliged to bring, you know, bring results even in impossible situations. Referring to Daniel again, what happened? In that Babylon, what was he doing? He was bearing fruit. He was bearing fruit. He wasn't making excuses. Okay? He wasn't. Praise the Lord. Okay. Another thing that uh, we, we put here. We said a vehicle or, or a car or an airplane moves or is directed by overcoming the resistance of the ground. So if there were no resistance on the ground, you know a car won't move. Did you know that? If there is no resistance, if there was no air, the plane won't fly. Okay? So every moving object moves because it plays and overcomes the resistance that is before it. So even the sheep in the water. So all those things ordinarily should hinder it. Okay? But by reason of the uh, 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 technology that is built into it, it overcomes that resistance and moves. Okay? Now, what will happen when the engine of the car doesn't have power? What will happen? The ground will not allow it move. Isn't it? If the plane loses the engine, what will happen? Or the engine loses fire, it will also what? It will start to wobble. Now, if that is the case with manufactured things, what then is the reason that problems and circumstances keep me from moving forward? What should I check? What I wrote here is that if the fuel finishes in the car, it can't move again now. Abby? Okay. So what is it in my life that is making the situations and circumstances I'm going through hold me where I am? It means that something has finished inside of me. The Bible says, if you faint in the day of adversity. They didn't say the adversity is too much. They say your fuel has finished. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 24, 10. You see, <clears throat> life, life, life was never made to be... If, if, if you go into space, you, you watch those space movies, directionless, they just float. It's a problem, actually, so they have to do a lot to manage it. So for, for normal life to exist, they, they, they create resistance. And as you walk with the resistance, you can order your life. So, you know, you're, 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 you're in your office, you know, this person is doing this. How, how will you become a star in that office if every day you come, everybody is just smiling at you? There has to be a boss. That no matter what you do, they can't see anything good in you. Praise the Lord. How, how many of us have been in such environments? Almost every. You see, it, it just has to be. In fact, I worked in an office. The first bank job I got, I, I left because it, it was no resistance. True story. I, I started in this, uh, what was the name? Um, UCB, United Commercial Bank. You might know it, ID. Were you born then? Uh -huh. United Commercial Bank, you know. The person that employed me, you know, employed me in, 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 a, in, a, in a bar where all in a gisting. He said, ah, what are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm doing you, sir. He said, what did you do? I said, I can't. He said, come on Monday. I came on Monday. He gave me the job. Commercial, you know, a new generation commercial bank, top, but he employed me. So I started work. <laughs> Brothers and sisters. Tuesday, I see another person resume. Ah, what happened? He said, my uncle said I should resume. <laughs> I 
I see another lady. I say, he say, ah, no, my, uh, my, my fiance is the friend to this way. So they said I should resume. End of that month, I quit that job. I left the job because I said, I don't want to build my career where everybody that is working there is enter. Enter. No, no, that, that's not them. I left the job. Without another job, <laughs> I'm telling you, I quit the job. Because w- what kind of environment would that be? What kind of standard is it going to be? You get what I'm saying? So, so adversity, resistance, what the Lord is trying to say to us as a church is that some of us have shut some doors because of resistance. You need to go and dust it up. Are you hearing me? Because what the problem is, is that you need to put fuel. You need to put the passion. I, 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 I told us also of, of when I did my mathematics, the jam, sorry, the, the jam that I did, okay? What would happen in those days? Because I didn't do additional mathematics. I didn't do further maths in secondary school. So when I was doing this jam, after my mates had left, after I left school, I'll be solving the mathematics. And I will see some that I can't solve. I'll do everything I can't solve them. What I'll do is that I keep them aside. When I sleep and wake up, before I talk, I face them. Anybody did that as well? Then you just face it. All of a sudden, the thing is melting in front of you. Okay? But that other time, if I looked at it for five hours, I wouldn't make progress. So I'll keep it aside. Even then, some still didn't allow me to solve them. So those ones, I now made consultations. But what I'm trying to say is that something is difficult does not mean there is no way there. No. Life is designed. You know, how many of us have seen children who don't walk, trying to walk? Children learning to walk. Do you know how many falls a child falls before he finally starts walking? If not for experience, most children won't be able to walk because their mothers will just carry them. You're falling too much. It's just that your mother knew that you felt like that. And your sister knew that your younger brother. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is what helps us. Now, the same thing in life. Somebody said they refused me. Go and knock on the same door. Tell them I'm persuaded that this is my own. Is somebody hearing me? <laughs> let, let, let's, let's see that Proverbs 24, 10 in the Living Bible. You're going to like that translation. <laughs> Read it for me. That's not talking about you, right? It says such a person is what? A poor specimen. If he can, she, he can't stand the pressure of adversity. They, they are disturbing me too much. That's life. That's life. When we had our son, you know, I mean, that was the first son we had. Not as if we, <laughs> first child we had. You know, so at a stage when you carry him, He'll be bouncing like this, bouncing like this. We thought he was playing. He was working his thigh muscles to be able to learn how to walk. Every child at a stage, that's what they do. Once you hold them in the arm, they're bouncing. They're doing, they're, they're, they're doing uh, 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 squats. They're doing squats, 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 so that these muscles can be strong enough. If they don't do it, when you put them in the walker, if you notice when you put children in the walker, what are they doing? They're doing like, they're working out these muscles. That correct specimen. But when you put a child that is, doesn't do anything that is working, the child will never work. So that is difficult. And then, some of us grow up when you go to school and come back and say they bullied you. They beat you and send you back. Say they bullied you. Which class? Say your classmate bullied you. They send you back. Until they bully and bully and bully, and you now be, learn to bully, bully. <laughs> That's life. He says such a why? Because the, the, every creature was created to overcome adversity. Every chicken you see broke the egg, the shell of the egg. Every butterfly you see. 
If you don't go through that process, you will never fully become what God intended for you. Somebody says the temptation is too much, you run away. Listen, there's temptation everywhere. Even if they lock only you alone in a room, there'll be temptation there. You must come to the place where you resist. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise Jesus, somebody. Okay, so, so when, when, when the plane, I, I want that to be very clear because, you know, what happens is this. Excuses are easy. But think of this automated product now. If the car is not moving, can it tell you that the ground is rough? It can't tell you. The problem will be where? In the capacity. Now, in some areas now, where the road, this, uh, where we're coming out from rainy season. Some areas become, the, the, the floor, the ground becomes very slippery. And you realize that a two-wheeled car may not be able to go, isn't it? But if you bring a four-wheel car, what will happen? It will just go through. What has happened? The floor, the ground is the same. But the capacity, the strength of the vehicle, what? Is higher. It's the same thing where you are now. You don't need the environment to change. You need to get stronger. I get it what I'm saying. If your office place, anytime you go there, they're just treating you anyhow. Why not try two hours Holy Ghost Church praying before you land in that office? When you get in, your boss will be talking like this and be, won't, won't be able to look in your face because there'll be fire in your eyes. Are you hearing me? You have a presentation to do. Every time you go to do presentation, you say, I beg, please consider me, consider me. Take that presentation. Become a four-wheel wrangler or which one not? Tundra. Go in the spirit. Build up yourself. Pray raketabo. When you bring that presentation, no comments. You just be like this. They'll be talking amongst themselves. You're still continuing even in the prayer. You know why? You see, it's not the environment. It's what you carry. It's not the resistance. A poor specimen, if adversity stops it, every time excuse, every time excuse, every time excuse. No. When there was contrary wind, Jesus didn't tell them, turn back. The Lord will help us. Amen. So the Bible says in Ephesians 3, 16, Paul praying. It says that we be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That's where we should be. Strengthened with might. The issue is that the engine is not strong enough. Dealing with our spouse, dealing with that child, dealing with that parent, dealing in that environment. There is a level of strength you will carry. The resistance will work for you. I think we can close here. Praise the Lord. Okay, one more. One more. One more for somebody. <clears throat> now, you know, as we're learning this now, somebody's calculating, where did I miss it? Where did I miss it? Matthew 25, verse, verse 21 or 23, any of them. Our Lord Jesus said something there. He said, he said, well done, good and faithful servant. He said, you are faithful over a few things. I will make you what? Ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. In these moments of, you know, uh, um, do, do I call it uh, resistance or whatever, adversity, some of us may genuinely be wondering what exactly is missing. Let me tell you. You are not expected to do so many, so many, many things. But you're expected to be faithful in that little. Is someone hearing me now? There's a faithfulness that is expected in the things you know. There are so many things I don't know. There are so many things you don't know. Do you understand? There are so many things. In, in fact, the Bible says to us in Ecclesiastes, it says, cast your bread upon many waters. It's after, upon the waters. After many days, it will come to you. You don't know which one. But if you didn't cast the bread, if you like, wait for 10 years, will anything come to you? 
There is a faithfulness that is required. That's why it's so, it's so foolish and so unwise when Christians backslide because they go through troubles. Where would the help come from? Any little challenge, the first casualty is your dedication to God. How does that make sense? Somebody is sick. The sickness is getting serious. Then you quarrel with the doctor. How, how does it make sense? It doesn't make sense. Do you understand? That is the time. He says, any man suffering, what should he do? He should pray. <laughs> he didn't say, if any man suffering. In fact, when the Jews, when the children of Israel were suffering and they murmured, God increased the suffering. You now know the here, Abby. He increased it. That's the response. Okay? So, 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 faithful over, there's things you can do then. Be doing them. The little you can do, remain faithful over them. God, do you know, do you know, do you know that every one of us, the Bible says you are inscribed upon the palms of God's hand. Not the pastor. Not your neighbor, you. So, it means as you're going through that difficulty, Jehovah is watching you. And they're watching your faithfulness in that small place. They're watching your faithfulness in that difficult environment. They're watching your response. They're watching your trust, your confidence, your boast. They're watching everything. And Jesus is saying, because you are faithful in the little thing there, I will lift you. You know, it's so easy to wait for the big things to be faithful. You know, it's so easy to wait, you know, when you become this, when this happens, then no, no, no. No, that's not smart. Be faithful in the little there. Be faithful in the small one there. Just do the one you can do faithfully. And what will happen is that your strength will be increased daily. Your opportunity will be increased daily. I, I've said it here, okay? No, I, I don't know if, I mean, the, the Holy Spirit will know. But I believe in divine healing. I believe in miraculous. But I don't believe in the one in the camera. I get him. What it means is that as you are here now, any situation you find is an occasion for the manifestation of God's power. In your office, at home, on the road, anywhere it is. Believe God. Lay hands. Pray. I get him. Don't wait. That, that one that they call camera and say, now Wait. No. As you go, you go. The, 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 one of the first healings recorded for us in the Bible was that Jesus went to Peter's house and the mother-in-law was sick. He didn't say, wait, when I, there will be a crusade five days later. Bring her to the crusade. He laid hands. So you go to the office. That unbelieving boss is complaining, this is my arm, this is my what? You just receive by faith. Faithful, you just do it. You know why? God is just. He will want to confirm your testimony there. Are you with me? And somebody say, but maybe if it doesn't work, if it doesn't work, and then he say, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Who sent you? It's him. For further inquiries, call Jesus. As simple as that. You remain faithful. You're doing what you should do. You're doing what you should do. You're doing what you should do. He says, I will make you ruler over many things. Let's rise on our feet. So we're going to pray. This thing that I'm obliged to do the impossible. I don't know how it comes to you, but where you're working, in your relationships, in the church, at home with your relatives, God has a lot of expectations on you. Praise the Lord. And the Apostle Paul says, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.
And they said to us that if because of adversity we are not able to bring forth, they say we are a poor specimen. That is not our portion in Jesus. So we're going to pray for strength. We're going to ask the Lord, increase us so that we can be true witnesses of who we are. We are correct specimens. Who are we? He says, as the Father has sent me, so have I sent you. We are representing Jesus. If the situation did not overcome Jesus, it shouldn't overcome you. The Bible says when he was reviled, did not revile in return. You've been in a situation where your mouth is just wanting to speak, wanting to speak, wanting to speak. Strength in the inner man. I want you to pray. Lord, strengthen me. I want to increase in capacity. I want to increase in capacity. I'm concerned especially maybe for marriages, but more for your offices. Some of us will go back to work operating in another level. Operating at another level. Because now you know that it's not the enemy. It's, what is that? Somebody in the office always looking for your trouble. They will realize that you carry a glow. That there is an anointing upon you. They said, Jesus said to them, who are, you, who are you looking for? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I'm here. They fell. So it's not the one up behind you. They will know that this one is not somebody you should toy with. Why? Because you are now carrying a higher dosage of the power of God. Lord, here I am. Revive me in my inner man. Strengthen me in my spirit man. Give me, oh Lord, that which you promised to equip me with. I am not to be normal. I'm not to be ordinary. I'm not to be brought under the elements. I'm not to be feeling what they're doing. I should be bigger than it. I should be stronger than it. I should be... It's, my, my emotions can't be running off anyhow anymore. I am born again. They know what to do to trip you. They say two words and they know you'll react. And they're waiting for you. You just come in and they push the buttons. And you lose it again. And the enemy will say, look at her. Look at him. No, not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. The competitors that you're competing with for that business. Do you know what they're doing? They give bribe, you're not to give bribe. They compromise, you're not to compromise. They cut the standards, you can't cut the standards. So how will I win in this job? By the anointing. By the anointing. They schemed, they plotted. How do we get Daniel out of the way? <laughs> the Bible said they could find no way. They checked his records, everything was okay. His productivity, everything was okay. His standard, everything was okay. His excellence, everything was okay. Somebody needs to ask the Lord, increase my level of excellence. I don't want to be mediocre anymore. I don't want to have to make excuses. I just want testimonies. I just want testimonies. Lord, anoint me. It's not the adversity. That's what we're learning. It's the capacity inside of me. It is the strength inside of me. It is the wisdom by which I operate. He said, by wise counsel we wage our war. So there's a wisdom that the adversary cannot gain sin or resist. That's what we are praying for. I want you to pray for yourself. There's a word you will speak. It will throw everything off. It will be the end of the discussion. Nothing else will be said. Because you would have downloaded the counsel of God in that hour. Lord, I want to hear you. I want to know your will. I want to learn your ways. Teach me your ways. The psalmist said, there is God who teach my, teaches my hands to war and my fingers to do battle. These hands need to be taught to war. Let me not fight physically when I should operate from the heavenly places. Teach my fingers. Give me the technology of spiritual warfare. When to keep quiet, they say everything, no response. You bless them. They're expecting you to fight. You bless them. You take them out for lunch. They're expecting you to do this. You forgive them. You, you humble yourself. And they're wondering what is going on here. You have thrown them off. All that they planned, the wisdom of God has said, go in this way. 
and you just throw them off. No argument. <laughs> Irresistible. They are, throw, they, they are wondering what has happened to him. Is he afraid of us? But they know that you're not afraid. Revive me, O oh Lord. Strengthen me with might in my inner man. I'm not a poor specimen. I am who you said I am. I can do what you said I can do. I am your witness. I am not experiencing any surprise circumstance. Every situation I'm facing, that infirmity in my body is not a surprise to Jehovah. He knows that he will heal me. And he knows he can heal me. And he has set the pattern for me to have victory. In the book of Revelation, our Lord and Savior Jesus says, To him that overcomes, which means that he knew something will come against you. So I received the overcoming anointing. For every op opposition, for every obstacle, to him that overcomes, Jesus is waiting for you, sister. Jesus is waiting for you, brother. On the victorious side, he put it and he knew that he put in you everything that you need to overcome. He said, I've taught you the word. I've given you the truth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Yeah, quiet, take it. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. Thanks be to God. SOS, are we? Thanks be to God.
Thank you, Jesus. We've got the victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Lord and our God. Thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for this indeed is deep, calling unto deep. We say a very big thank you, our Lord and our God. Tonight we receive strength in the inner man in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we are strengthened with might in our inner man. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for strength even in that day of adversity. Thank you for your church. Thank you for strengthening your church. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we are overcomers in the name of Jesus. We receive grace to overcome in the name of Jesus. We bless and we glorify your holy name. Thank you for excellent spirit that you have deposited in each and every one in this assembly to the glory and praise of your name. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Lord, you will gain glory in our lives. Lord, you will gain glory even in our places of businesses. You will gain glory even in our place, in the marketplace, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for you are raising men in this house. You are raising men that you will use as a signpost to the glory and praise of your name. Bible says that your eyes run to and fro the earth, searching for men and women whose hearts are right with you, that you might show yourself strong on their behalf. Lord, you will find such in this assembly. In the name of Jesus Christ, to you and you alone be all the glory forever and ever in Jesus' mighty name. And God's people said, Amen. Hallelujah. I want to beg you, please don't sit down. We're going to take offering differently today. We'll take offering standing, dancing, singing. Choir, shall we take our offering? Praise the Lord. Don't be, don't be weak. You're strengthened with might in the inner man. Hallelujah. You are strengthened with might in the inner man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Choir. Everything, everything. I give my life for this. It's what I live for. Nothing will keep me from all that you have for me. You hold my head up. Sleeping in me, that he that is in the world. Hey, I can move the mountain, I can do all things through Christ. I know, hey, standing up, believing, I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me? I'm reaching for the singing the way we sing during our prayer. Eh? Yes. Hallelujah for the Lord our God the Almighty reign. That's how we sing. Oh yeah, your hand. Hallelujah he reigns. Hallelujah for the Lord our God the Almighty Almighty. He reigns in Nigeria. He 
reigns in the Father's church. He reigns in our homes. He reigns in our marriages. He reigns in our children's education. He reigns in every aspect of our lives. Our God reigns. Thank you, our Lord and our God. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you for our offering. We thank you for our tithes. We thank you for our affectionate offering. We thank you, King of Glory, for the redeemed vows. We say thank you. Lord, we are grateful. You are our God. You are our source. Lord, we thank you for all the great and mighty victories that you won for us. We are grateful, our Father. Lord, we thank you because we know, O oh God, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered the thoughts of man, that which you are about to reveal through your children in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord our God. We say, may this be acceptable unto you. Let it come like a sweet smelling server in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, in return, you will increase us, O oh God, in every aspect, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. You say, none shall come before you empty. But adventure, Lord, one or two have appeared tonight, O oh God, and our noble King of glory to give to you, Lord. Lord, we are asking, you are the greatest provider. You are the greatest provider. Lord, provide in the name of Jesus. Lord, provide in the name of Jesus. You are the promoter. Lord, promote in the name of Jesus. We give you all the glory, Lord Father. Blessed be your holy name forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You may be seated briefly. Thank you. So, quickly, I want to say this. Um, we also, we understand that um, some of us... Um, like to give our offerings using the POS. Unfortunately, we've had challenges with our POS. Most of the POS we had is from Zenith Bank. And many of us know that Zenith Bank has been very fantastic over the past periods. So we're making arrangements to replace them. However, we can see the accounts that were posted, you know, on the screen. You can give your offerings using that um, platform through transfers. It mustn't be done while whilst we're here. It can be done at your home. So you can just type the numbers, the account numbers, save them. If you use an app or you use the USSD, if you don't do either of those or maybe you don't do transfer, you can also withdraw the cash and come in, take the envelope and do the needful. The Lord will bless you as you do that in the mighty name of Jesus. We're also speaking to our brothers and sisters who have joined us online. You know, like for me, oftentimes, when I'm not able to pay tight within a week or two, I get worried because it means I've not uh, made money. And I know that my father, who was in heaven, and his name is always uh, hallowed, and he says he will give me my daily bread. Giving me my daily bread means he will give me to be able to eat, and I will also sow my own seed. And the Lord will do the same for you in Jesus' name. Every time I pray those prayers, I always get opportunity to pay my tithe. Tithe is very important. Don't listen to all those people. Though. Tithe is very, very important. Too. Very, very important. The Lord will give you revelation in the name of Jesus Christ. Eh? Don't listen to those people. Uh -huh. The Lord will give you revelation in Jesus' name. You are not saying amen now. Say amen. Amen means so shall it be. <laughs> when you say amen, even heaven hears you. Praise the Lord. Uh, amen. Oh yeah, digital announcement. What are you having for lunch on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thanksgiving Friday? is God's How address for the Christian. For our power Every transaction with God should start and end with Thanksgiving. Because the closure of one with thanks initiates and qualifies you for his favorable disposition in the next. So please join us with a heart of gratitude this Sunday at Eden by 9 a.m. for our monthly Thanksgiving service. Come and offer the sacrifice of praise which is the fruit of our lips. Invite someone and come along with your dancing shoes. Stay blessed. Now you get to me, Baba. 
Lord, I say, for your love, I'm great. Oh, yes, you love me plenty. You came to die for me. What are you having for lunch on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday? How about joining us for our Power Pack Long Child Fellowship, where as a family, we gather together and pray prevailing prayers, strengthen our faith with the word, and share praise reports of the wonders of God's faithfulness for just 30 minutes between 1 and 1.30 here in Eden. Virtually every prayer request in this meeting is followed by testimonies of God's goodness. This is the perfect launch. Time of refreshing. Who is excited in the house? Awesome. Our God is good. So we have further announcement here. Sunday school holds here at Eden. Time is 8 a.m. I believe that for as many as have participated in the Sunday school, there are lessons, there are life lessons that we must have taken from each of those, you know, those days when we come on Sunday. Come expectant and the Lord God Almighty will continue to bless you in Jesus' name. Now, if you do not get, if you do not receive WhatsApp messages from the church, we have a number on the screen right now. You can immediately pick up that, that number and send your name only. It's WhatsApp to that phone number. And in addition, you will also get the Zoom link for the Get Connected if you are unable to join the Get Connected in person. It's, also, it's a fantastic platform provided so that as many of us as possible are able to tune in and be blessed, you know, for this all-important um, fellowship. The Lord bless you as you do that in Jesus' name. On Saturday, October 29th, all Joy Force members will be having their general meeting. Joy Force, are you in the house? Joy Force, praise the Lord. How about now? Joy Force, praise the Lord. Uh -huh. So Saturday, 3 p.m., there will be a general meeting of all Joy Force members. Please take note. Tell those who are not here. And um, let's make sure we all come together so we can fellowship with one another. The Lord bless you as you do that in Jesus' name. The Father's Church Annual Conference, Manifestations of the Sons of God, MSG 2022, tagged a different spirit, comes up next month from November 18th to 20th. Who is excited in the house? <laughs> Hallelujah. Is the Father's Church 19th anniversary? Who is the Father's Church? It's you and it's me. So this is our birthday. Praise God. It is our birthday. You know the way you want to celebrate your birthday, you do your normal um, is it is it is it barbecue or barbecue? How do you pronounce it? Barbecue. We like the name barbecue. You barbecue the fish, you barbecue the chicken. If you do the asu, is it asu you call it? Asu for those that eat. Uh, you know, so, this is our birthday. It's my birthday. It's your birthday. Uh, can you tell it your, tell it tell yourself? This is my, okay. So, birthday. Uh, I will bite my tongue, Pastor. It, birthday. It's our birthday. Okay, not birthday. Okay, birthday. Praise the Lord. So, the Lord gave a word and great was the company that published it. Let's spread the news. Share all on social media platforms. Invite your friends and invite your neighbor. It's a different spirit. More information will come out soon. There is um, um, an e-flyer that you will put your face, you know, for the advertisement. Because it's your birthday. It's your birthday. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And as part of this, our birthday celebration, we have coming up on Friday, November 4th, 2022 at 6 p.m. here at Eden, Evangelism Made Easy, tagged Accurate 
time keeper. So we're saying, you want to invite that your boss in the office that is yet to be born again. Please, the catchphrase, yet to be born again. The unsaved, the target is the unsaved. So the idea is that we want to invite every unsaved person that you know. Every unsaved person that you come across. So we have cards. These are beautiful cards. I don't think it is going to be difficult to give out. It's a beautiful card. Accurate timekeeper. It's an evening event. It's a stage play. And by the grace of God, um, rehearsals are going on and the Holy Spirit will breathe upon it in the name of Jesus Christ. So you get this card and invite your friends, invite your colleagues, invite your neighbors, invite your frenemies, and invite that your boss. The time is now. So you can meet any of the ushers or Pastor Livingstone and get at least two cards. The Lord bless you as you do that in Jesus' name. This event comes up on the 4th of November, 2022 at 6 p.m. here in, at Eden. Praise the Lord. Is there anyone worshiping with us for the very first time here tonight? Today is the very first day you're worshiping with us in the Father's Church. Can you just wave your hands to me? Today is your first time in the Father's Church. And if there is none, shall we all rise as we share the grace and fellowship? And please ensure you take this card and invite as many as possible. They don't even need to be your friends. They might be people you come across on a regular basis. You know, the Bible says that it, those that win souls are wise. So let's be wise in the mighty name of Jesus. And let also put this, this um, our birthday programs in prayer. Praise the Lord. God bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.